Hey there, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Yammy Noob. We're going to hop in the digital time machine today, so put on some essential two-stroke riding gear like cut-off jean shorts and a trucker hat, and let's explore the world of two-stroke motorcycles. Many younger riders who haven't spent much time in the dirt may not have much experience with two-stroke machines, except maybe for gas-powered lawn tools. So that one time they looped a friend's stepdad's CR500 in the alley behind their trailer park. They don't know a damn thing about mixing gas and tapping ass. As a result of tightening emissions regulations, manufacturers haven't been able to sell two-stroke motorcycles for street use in the United States since 1985. Although there have been plenty of die-hard two-stroke aficionados who have found some workarounds since then, like importing JDM motorcycles from the 90s or smuggling one across the border from Canada. So let's take a look at how two-stroke engines work, what makes them so cool, and what iconic bikes came from those glory days. Make sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell. Today's video is proudly supported by Rockform. I will talk about them later in the video. Before we jump into it though, I want to formally invite you to tune in to our drag race shootout on September 29th at 9pm EST. We've rented out our local drag strip and we'll be putting on a clinic demonstration and races against some locals. You can be part of it too by going to moment.co slash yammy noob to purchase your ticket to watch along with us in anywhere in the world. Should be a really fun time, really excited to engage with our community in this way. Head to moment.co slash yammy noob to learn more about it. Okay, so what exactly is a two-stroke engine? To put it simply, a two-stroke engine creates a power cycle with just two strokes of the piston, meaning one power cycle is completed in one full rotation of the crankshaft as opposed to a a four-stroke engine that creates power cycle every four strokes and two rotations of the crankshaft. This means that a two-stroke engine is essentially making the same amount of power in half the time of a four-stroke engine of a similar size. This rapid firing gives a two-stroke motorcycle the distinct high-pitched exhaust sound. These types of motorcycles have a long history of being popular in racing because of their lightweight and high power output. In the height of their popularity, two-stroke engines were relatively cheap to make and somewhat rudimentary in their design, leading to poor fuel efficiency and high emissions. A two-stroke engine needs to have lubricating oil mixed into the gas either by using pre-mixed gas or through an injection oil system. And since oil doesn't burn as easily as gasoline, a two-stroke has a fun trail of smoke puffing behind the bike like a vape cloud that follows a Subaru with its windows down. Companies like KTM, Husky, and even Yamaha still make two-stroke dirt bikes. Bikes like the 300SX from KTM have an electronic fuel and oil injection and valve system that make them far more efficient engines than the rudimentary two-stroke of the 1970s. It is often debated by two-stroke lifers that had technology not been abandoned, making a two-stroke engine that is nearly as efficient as a four-stroke would not be an impossible feat. But I'm not an engineer, and something tells me that these people who make these statements are not that either, so I'm not going to think about it too hard. Since some manufacturers are still making two-stroke motorcycles, albeit for just off-road purposes, there must be some significant advantages over their four-stroke brethren. Let's break it down a little bit. Now listen, just because you want to ride around your neighborhood blowing smoke like it's 1980, that doesn't mean you should have your phone at risk with such outdated technology. Luckily, Rockform has you covered. Rockform makes the best phone cases and handlebar mounts for motorcyclists. Their cases are drop tested and super durable, perfect for when you underestimate the power of any little two-stroke and neat yourself over backwards. Even better, they have handlebar mounts for any style of motorcycle. They have mounts that will work with a standard flat handlebar, clip-ons, or even some wicked ape hangers. Their phone cases easily connect with the mounts for quick attachment, so no need to waste any precious riding time fiddling with a cheap knockoff mount. Rockform even makes vibration dampeners for extra protection for the complex cameras you find in new phones nowadays. If you follow the link below and use the code YN25, you'll receive 25% off your order. Thank you, Rockform, for supporting the channel. Again, that is YN25 for 25% off. Now back to the show. So there are a few pros for a two-stroke engine. Like we talked about early, they make significantly more power than a four-stroke engine of similar size. For example, Valentino Rossi won the 2001 MotoGP Championship on a Honda NSR 500, which is a 500cc two-stroke V4 that made 185 horsepower. When was the last time you heard of a 500cc four-stroke engine pushing that much power? Not only are they more powerful, they also have significantly lighter weights than the four-stroke equivalent. Aside from having high power figures, two-stroke motorcycles rev up and accelerate really quickly, which can be a very exciting experience. Back in the day, two-stroke engines were also cheaper and easier to service since they had fewer moving parts than a four-stroke engine, which made the cost of ownership lower for some bikes. It's actually a good segue into the downsides of two-stroke engines, because while being easier and cheaper to work, on, they usually require service more frequently. If you've got less parts making twice the power, it's usually going to take a larger toll on engine internals. They also ride differently than four-stroke motorcycles. They're great for revving out and ripping up the gears quickly, but you usually have a narrow power band that's less willing to maintain speed.
speed with gentle throttle. You usually have to stay hard on the gas to keep it moving. This makes them fitting for race applications, either during road racing back in the day or for motocross racing today. Four-stroke engines are typically easier to ride. They have a broader, smoother power band with a more instant low-end torque. They aren't as twitchy as some two-stroke bikes can be. A four-stroke engine typically sees less wear and tear than a two-stroke, but they are a little bit more difficult on if you get to see the inside of an engine. So now that we know the mechanical differences of two-stroke and four-stroke motorcycles and the benefits of each style, let's take a look at some of the significant two-stroke motorcycles from the past that infatuated riders both on the racetrack and on the street. You can't talk about two-stroke street bikes without talking about the infamous Kawasaki H2 Mach 4. The H2 Mach 4 was also known as the Widowmaker, named after its terrifying ability to send those who dared it to ride into an early grave if they were not careful with the th throttle. The Coke was pure in the 1970s and so was Kawasaki's intention of making the fastest production motorcycle of the time. This bike was produced between 1972 and 1975, had a 748cc air-cooled three-cylinder two-stroke engine that was making 74 horsepower and 57 foot-pounds of torque. This was insanely fast for a motorcycle at the time and the suspension and braking components were not up to the same standards as the engine, which contributed to the frightening riding experience. In 1972, the H2 was able to do a quarter mile in just over 12 seconds. A stock R6 does a quarter mile in like 11 seconds, and it's hard to fathom going that fast on a motorcycle that has suspension and braking power inferior to a modern mountain bike. All gas and no brakes, baby. That's the Kawasaki lifestyle. Another geriatric two-stroke classic is the Suzuki GT750. This bike was actually the first water-cooled Japanese motorcycle while simultaneously being Suzuki's last large two-stroke street bike. The GT750 was released in 1971 and was in production until 1977. Unlike the coked-out chaotic evil that was Kawasaki his H2 Widowmaker, the GT750 was more of a chaotic neutral and nicknamed the Water Buffalo in America. Not as distinctly badass as the Kawasaki. The bike had a much more refined riding experience and like the GT and the name implies was suitable for all day riding, not just ripping quarter miles in between downing a few schlitz at the end of a drag strip like the H2 was seemingly built for. The GT750 had a 739cc three-cylinder two-stroke engine that made 70 horsepower. In the six years it was in production, Suzuki continuously updated the GT750 and just like liquid cooling, it saw a few other industry firsts like coming equipped with dual front disc brakes. It was a really cool motorcycle to occupy the transitional period between the classic UGM motorcycles from the early 70s and bigger inline 4 motorcycles of the early 80s. By the late 1970s, two-stroke motorcycles were dominating MotoGP or the 500 series as it was called back then. One of the most iconic motorcycles of this era is the Suzuki RG500 powered by a square 4 two-stroke engine. Suzuki won quite a few races during the late 70s with this motorcycle. In 1980, Suzuki came out with the RG500 Gamma as their MotoGP bike. It was during this time that they made what was considered to be the first mass-produced race replica street bike for riders, the RG250 Gamma. This motorcycle had a 250cc two-stroke parallel twin that made 50 horsepower and 27 foot-pounds of torque. It was one of the first street bikes with a lightweight aluminum frame and racing fairings. By 1988, it was also replaced by the RGV250, which was another race replica sport bike from Suzuki. It had a 250cc two-stroke V-twin engine, but made 62 horsepower and weighed only 345 pounds. That's nice. This bike is up there with the Honda NSR250 as being the kind of quintessential 90s two-stroke sport bike artifacts that only make their way to the Americas through importing collectors. While having a super high top speed for 250, this bike had a power band less convenient than an R6, making peak power between 8,000 and 11,000 RPM, but still so cool. During the height of the two-stroke infatuation of the mid 80s to the early 90s, Yamaha made the RZ350. This was one of the last two-stroke street bikes made available to the American market in 1985. The RZ350 had a liquid-cooled 347cc parallel twin two-stroke engine that made 59 horsepower and 29 foot-pounds of torque. While being one of the last two-stroke bikes sold in America, it was a in few industry first. It was the first bike in the U.S. to come equipped with a catalytic converter. I wouldn't say that it's particularly exciting first, but a milestone nonetheless. It was also the first bike from Yamaha to come with a perimeter frame, where the frame rails wrapped around the outside of the fuel tank as opposed to a single spine underneath the center of the tank, making it more akin to modern sport bikes than the older UGM counterparts. These bikes have the Yamaha power valve system, a system similar to what other manufacturers used in two-stroke engines around this time, that adjusted exhaust port height and consequently timing to increase both low-end torque and high-end RPM power. But like any two-stroke street bike of this era, it wanted to live at the top of the rev range. Also, fun fact, my dad had one of these bikes way back in the day. 
The last motorcycle I want to talk about is one I briefly touched on in our Honda used to be exciting video from last week is the Honda NSR 250R. The bike was the production model of the NSR 250, aka the RS 250R Honda GP bike. The production model was made from 1987 to 1999, had a 249cc V-twin two-stroke engine that made 55 horsepower and 26 foot-pounds of torque. It was incredibly lightweight, nimble, and flickable. It is a super, super cool piece of motorcycle history. They weren't sold in American dealerships, but plenty of were imported in the last 25 years and have been sought out by collectors and two-stroke enthusiasts. This bike was the pinnacle of early 90s sport bike energy with a screaming two-stroke engine, chattering dry clutch, and a scant 330-pound curb weight. Thanks for watching until the end and enjoying this oil-burning digital hot box. If you could only ride a buzzy two-stroke or a silent electric bike for the rest of your life, which would it be? Fact. Shown at the end credits of a movie, bloopers are the outtakes of scenes with errors or funny mistakes. However, in the 50s, people referred to these outtakes as boners, aka boneheaded mistakes. Goodbye.